Welcome to the Kind of Nerdy Girls podcast. Fandom. Fun. Funny. Kind of Nerdy Girls podcast. All right. Well, thanks, Alrighty. guys. Welcome to the show. That's, a, that's all we're going to give you. I'm expecting a, a, a scathing Facebook message from the one sibling that doesn't like me. But we'll get to what that later. Listen. <laughs> That's true. She's not listening. <laughs> <laughs> so I want to start off first with the worst Chris Evans update. I don't understand that. Wah, 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 wah. It's for Chris Evans update. Wah, wah, wah. Now Why I'm going to tell you, it's not the like the worst in the, I, I saw Jonna's face. She's like, what happened to Chris Evans? Right. It's, so it's the worst update I've ever done because it's not like super happy for Chris Evans. This week, the mantle of Captain America across all of the social media was changed from Steve Rogers <laughs> to Sam Wilson. <laughs> I'm so happy for him. I'm I so know. sad and happy all at the same time. I know. I know. That's what I'm saying. Like, it was just like it took my breath away i was like oh at least it's not john walker oh my gosh can you guys imagine i thought the exact same thing can you imagine the uproar if the captain america twitter account had been changed to john walker even for a day i think they should have i think they should have bought into it they should have done it like when he first became captain america like on the very first episode until they took his shield away oh my gosh (laughs) No, that would have been hilarious. Oh yeah, poor, poor Wyatt Russell got bullied know. enough, right? Can you yeah. imagine? Oh my the gosh! Guy. Oh, and, and, yeah. yeah. I maintain great actor, horrible character. Yes, <laughs> exactly. Yes, yes. Yeah. So, so that I mean, that's the news, and obviously, you know, Chris Evans happy for Anthony Mackie, and Aren't we and Stan happy, and. We, because we are finally together when everyone has seen the finale of Falcon and the Winter Soldier, can talk about it. So let's do this, guys. What a segue. Talking Marvel, talking Marvel, talking Marvel, talking Marvel. Wiki, wiki, talking Marvel, talking Marvel. Wiki, wiki. All right. Katie, you're up. Are we allowed to swear on this podcast? Yes. Bet. I just shit my pants. Like, (laughs) it was such a good finale. (laughs) So many things that just threw me in so many different directions that I I don't even know. What was the the moment that you uh, almost had your first accident? (laughs) Hmm. I'm trying to remember the exact order. I'm just going to list them in no particular order. Sharon being the power broker. Okay. um, well, I was like, what the fuck, Sharon? You know? <laughs> oh, wow, you are going to swear. Okay. Oh, sorry. What the I'm fuck, Sharon? No, it's I'm, all good. I'm also going to swear. It's <laughs> like, okay, your aunt's rolling in her grave. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> uh, yeah. You know? And then uh, Bucky did not shoot Zemo in the face. That was a big deal. Did you think he was going to? No, because he's a better yeah. man now. And, like, I totally get it. But still, like, mm, rich guy probably needs some new pants. <laughs> you know um i don't think so i'm gonna I, i'm gonna jump in on that katie i i think zemo was ready and it was a worse fate for him that to live yeah did not oh yeah shoot. oh yeah no doubt it is the, uh, look however, that he, the look that he gave Bucky, it was almost like yes please see i took it as more of like damn like mm, no you you could have killed me and that would have like totally validated the whole like I hate super soldiers and blah 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 and whatever. However, right. like his whole genocide of the super soldiers thing, like from prison, big oh, deal. Yeah. Very yeah. horrifying that he actually has the ability to do that. Yes, I agree. I mean, he's rich, so rich people can do anything. Agreed. Literally, yeah, yeah. We're, someday we'll be rich and we'll get to do what we want, but we'll be nice. Are we gonna have to murder people? Because that I sounds like not. a lot of. <laughs> I was really the guy I, I the entire time I was like where have I seen this bad guy before the the one that was fighting Falcon in the building and like oh, he kept showing up whenever they speak in French yeah. I was like where have I seen him where have I seen him that's the dude from the boat where yeah. Captain America spoke French and he's like bring it on you know 
whatever. It took me like 30 minutes to figure that out. Well, and that was so, it, it was so interesting to watch that because of the fact that like Captain America, like they showed you right then and there that Sam was not Steve. Yes. Right. Like he is just getting his butt beat by this guy. Yes. And like he does not, he's not a super soldier. He's going to have to work harder in a different way to yeah. be Captain America. But it, I thought it was very cool that they that they brought him back specifically, that you were like, oh man, the epic, that epic scene of him and Captain America on the boat where you're seeing Steve has clearly like upped his game and his fighting style you're seeing all this cool stuff and then you're seeing sam at the beginning of being captain america being like i haven't had all that training and i'm also not a super soldier yeah i fought a tree <laughs> in my sister's yard before this um <laughs> however i did really appreciate the incorporation with the wings and the shield at the same time i thought it was a different fighting style i thought it was very smooth obviously i really loved the choreography and this whole thing it was like really fantastic for me, the moment that he became Captain America was when he was telling off the senators right at the end. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, I and know. it was so much exactly like that Winter Soldier speech where it's like you can't point guns at people uh, and that's freedom and all that kind of stuff. And uh, they were just so similar. Jada, you got you want to you want to jump in here because I know you had feelings about all oh, that. Oh my god, I just was immediately sobbing like first five minutes, <laughs> like. Where Anthony Mackie comes in, like burst through that window, and he stands up with his shield and his wings. And I was like, <laughs> I was like, this is just, this is exactly what I wanted. Like, why hasn't the show been this the whole time? And I just, I just, <laughs> he wasn't ready to be that. I know he had I to know. grow as a person. He did, and I totally get that. But I, oh God, I saw, like, I sobbed through that like whole episode because I just. Good could not handle it and like Bucky not killing Zemo and just giving him over to the Wakandans like I was just like damn Bucky you are becoming a good person I think coming it was always there whatever well, anyway. but he was ignore as, the whole terrorist part like it was always there <laughs> as we were watching Sam go through his personal growth to be comfortable with Captain America we were watching Bucky go through his growth God and enough and oh. letting go mm -hmm. and truly believing that he could not be the winter soldier anymore literally yeah. when he went to that old man and was like hey i'm the one who killed your son i was like oh, I was like, oh my god are you actually doing this right now like well, yeah, he had to atone for everything he did i know but I then know. also i was like he left kind of quickly like you just dropped that right. on him and kill like, your kid bye <laughs> That was me. We had, I mean, some, good, we had some good you, times at the sushi bar, didn't we? Peace would out. Would you stick <laughs> around and be like, they're there. I know I killed your kid. I'm sorry. It was that, just a that. weird like jump cut, though. It was like, hey, I murdered your son. Then he's walking out the door. And I was like, well, what yeah. happened? Like, did they talk about it? And then, But he like walked past the sushi restaurant or whatever. And then the way she gave him that just, look, she's like, mm. she gave him. She did give him the nod, though. She was like, I get it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. But, mass murder i get it i think yeah, that there know. were some things i i haven't watched so assembled came out so you can go back and watch the like making of the falcon and the winter soldier now i'm definitely gonna watch that i've heard that it's really really good but i haven't heard if they address any of the and maybe they won't because they're marvel but i do i wonder and i feel like there were things that they had to change because of the pandemic because of changing how they did things with things rolling out with WandaVision first and Black Widow mm -hmm. getting delayed and like all the stuff that you're, you're right. Like there were some jump cuts. There were clearly some, you could tell that there was voiceover dialogue that was yes. like, there was supposed to be something else happening here and now we're getting this. And I think that's part of the reason, like some of the stuff like Bucky's quick exit and some of these things <laughs> where it was like, I, I feel like we should have seen a little bit more of, Bucky, yeah. like there should have been like like awkward like uh, we're gonna sit here in silence now because Ooh, yeah. yeah i gotta like i have to take this on i'm not just here to be like that was me peace out that's not what bucky would do but for editing purposes that's what we saw yeah and also in editing sebastian stan announced and is lobbying for the bucky and sarah cut to come out because i want there it is so bad 
Dude, there he I is. I want it so I, bad. He, he has gone on record and said there is more footage of the two of them flirting. We what? deserve it. Yeah. I mean, they gave I us the video it. of Zemo dancing. So, like, right. Right. We have this. That's part of the reason I thought it was so brilliant on, on Sebastian's part. It was like, we, everybody asked for Zemo dancing and you got it. How about we get the extended scenes of Bucky and Sarah's Bucky yeah. romance? So, Why don't you let Bucky be happy? Let's get the Feige cut, guys. Come on. Let's yeah. Do it. <laughs> Come on. You guys wanted the damn Snyder cut so bad. Give me the Feige cut. I, I would watch please. four hours of that. Definitely. Honestly, the same. Literally. Yeah. I was I was a little bit bummed at the end that it was you know we got the like the dramatic Captain America instead of the Falcon but it was still the Winter Soldier. I wanted to see it like I don't know Captain America, Captain America and, and the White Wolf news, probably the White Wolf, Wolf. yeah uh, you know they they were repeatedly referring to him as Sergeant Barnes in the last I episode. Like I'm like are we going to get like Captain America yes, and Sergeant I, Barnes? <laughs> I love I love the respect that they were giving Bucky by not calling him the Winter Soldier. They were like Sergeant Barnes. Yes. Sergeant Barnes. And I was like, yes, he deserves that. Right. Yes, That's why when the Captain America came across, I was like, what are we going to call Bucky? Oh. Well, I mean, because the show was more about the Falcon becoming Captain America than it was about Bucky becoming like the White Wolf or whatever. I would argue it was more about these two dudes with a mutual friend becoming friends themselves. <laughs> like they both had to grieve and move on in their own way. Yeah. You know? So I, it, I would say were, it was about both of them. There yeah. were, it just took different paths to get there. Mo- yeah. yeah, there were multiple layers. You had, you know, Sam's storyline, you had Bucky's storyline, then you had, which I think things were a little convoluted where you had the the flag smashers and are we supposed to be caring so much about who the power broker is and like Ooh, i think that got it a, up for the future but i think that that was like so there was like we need sam's development we need bucky's development and we need to move the mcu forward and we need to do it all in six episodes you know they could have given us more than six episodes if they right. really needed more they, time they could have yeah i would have been down just saying them. honestly yeah. they could have taken us like right to loki honestly like because of yes. the way WandaVision went, like I think we only had like what a week or two mm-hmm, before yeah. we got yeah. Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Yeah. I feel like they could have taken us all the way until like we were about to hit Loki. But yeah, that's because just my opinion. An interesting evolution if you go back to when we first started talking about Falcon and the Winter Soldier, there were even I mean, there were conversations of it was moving kind of slow and that like mm-hmm. should this have just been a movie? And now after six episodes, it's like what you did probably needed more episodes, guys. <laughs> Give me more. Give and me you know, more. they would have done so much more if they would have gotten a two hour movie than with the six episodes that we got. Two hours? Yeah. This is Marvel. We're looking at three. Give me six hours of uninterrupted yes. Falcon and the Soldier of content. The rings, uh... <laughs> I'm uh, ready. Any, any other thoughts for you, Jada? Because we transitioned over to the emotional, you know, speech at the end and Sam being, oh. you know, truly Captain America in that moment. Was there anything else that really, you know, either either you loved about it or you didn't either way? I, I, I do have a, thing, a couple of things that I didn't really love about it, but mm-hmm. I will say that I, I will say to Katie's point, I was very like on the Sebastian Stan train in that last episode. Cause he's looking fresh. He was looking very fresh. I was like, okay, all right, we're taking care of ourselves. That's great. So proud of That's you. That's called growth. <laughs> <laughs> I am a, a little uh, shocked at this, Jana, before you continue on. I actually had some feelings that there were, uh, Bucky was fine, but there was not enough Bucky. I got that we needed to see the Sam thing happen to become mm-hmm. Captain America. Finally, I, we're all on the same page. I was disappointed in the last episode that there wasn't more. I was thrilled he was hitting on his sister. I loved it. Hey, Winter like, Soldier, total, invited to the barbecue. Okay. Total stepdad <laughs> vibes where he's like watching the kids play with the shield and he's like kind of sort of flirting, like, mm, yeah, I can lift these kids with my metal arm. Right? Mm-hmm. My stepdad is I'm the here Winter for Soldier. It. I'd watch that. Yes. Um, yeah, I'm here for this. Right. And it. I want to see the scene where Sam gets called away to be Captain America and Bucky's like, mm, I join you, but the kid's got soccer. I can't, I can't miss I'll it. I'll keep right? your sister company. <laughs> I 
got okay, this. Sarah, don't say, don't worry. worry. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I magically know about boats because sure, why yeah. not? You're you're the uncle. You should probably go off and do the saving. I'm the stepdad. I need to be I have here. Way more go ahead, Captain America. This is fine. Yeah. <laughs> I would totally watch that. Yeah. Same. Watch and see too. Please. I heard that they might do a Falcon and the Winter Soldier second season. Yes. I mean, it's like a room. I mean, it's like a rumor, but I feel like they, I feel like they should. The way everything was like kind of left, like we kind of were left a little hanging. I didn't like that they made Sharon the power broker, though. I will say that I didn't. Yeah. How dare they? I didn't. Yeah. I wasn't here for that at all. But also, girl didn't get pardoned, and the guy she wasn't loved with basically left her hanging and went Is back now in time. Kind of and her uncle in law became her uncle. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Right. Like I could, at first I was like, I'm not buying this, you know, Sharon Carter. But I also it. definitely don't buy Peggy Carter's niece trading government secrets for money. Yeah. Same. Like that seems very out of character, no matter how like, you know, oh I, I didn't get pardoned and whatever and yada yada. I don't imagine I, her to be loyal to the government, but I don't imagine like her a, throwing like it a, out. A double triple something secret agent a quadruple agent yeah well, she's playing four different sides of <laughs> no i mean i genuinely think I, they're setting her up to be the next antagonist or at I least really partially i honestly hope not i kind of feel like they just like they probably had another power person to be power broker in mind and then covid and then they were like oh you know what sharon let's just make yeah. sure because we didn't get even get a lot of sharon in the show which i thought was really weird considering she was on every single freaking poster yes. that we saw I, and all we we got her like what four episodes Damn, i agree not even. And, and if you watch the editing there's a lot of like close-ups of sharon like on the phone or like the the voice mm -hmm. thing where it's like we didn't get everything we were supposed to i'm being such yeah. a conspiracy theorist here but i feel like there was a different storyline before covid mm -hmm. and then there were things they had that they just had to do one of the theories that i've heard that would make sense it, because we saw those those bat scenes in the beginning yeah uh, is that the storyline was along the lines of some sort of like virus outbreak and that <laughs> uh, oops yeah and that they I don't think we'll ever know the truth on that, but that would, if you go back and look at where some of the, the storyline was muddy and you knew they had to change things, like, yeah, they did have all those vaccines in the beginning and we would have liked them a lot better if they were helping sick people instead of like... Blowing up buildings? Blowing up buildings, right, right. Yeah. Like we knew we were supposed to kind of be on their side i don't know i kind of get like the whole radicalization thing because you had to get to that point where captain america has to make a point and come forward and whatever and if they're bringing vaccines and they're not really antagonists yet like yeah. what's the point yeah but yeah. then did we need john walker to be such an antagonist no we didn't need him at all we didn't need we didn't need any of that <laughs> honestly the story probably would have moved a lot faster if they would have just cut john walker's story out of it like also who is Val? Who is Val? Mm, we're going to get that. Oh, uh, yeah. I, I do think that that is a big part of, of what they did with this was with WandaVision, we really kind of had like a, this is the ending. We knew there was no season two of WandaVision. Their characters have moved to where they're going to be in the MCU the next time. What, she going to kidnap another town? Like, <laughs> but with Falcon and the Winter Soldier, there was a, a, a specific motivation to move the mcu storyline along mm -hmm. which was different from there were there are tidbits and we're gonna see what happens with wandavision now but i think that there was more in the falcon and winter soldier setting things up for possibly doctor strange or whatever else is coming than there is with than there was with wandavision can we talk about doctor strange for like a hot second like Please? okay terrorist attack in new york city He's down the street and didn't do anything. Right. Like, right. I, I get the whole, we can't have everybody show up for everything always, but it is down the street, dude. That is like, yeah, that is. Like, where is Spider-Man? Maybe is he's in another multiverse. That is what I think it, it, they are going to explain because it just kept coming I I into my head the same thing. Like, he's right there. He's down he's, the street. His, it literally, his job is to monitor the magic shit going on. Yes. Why is he not? Why is he not okay. jumping in here going, excuse me, Wanda? 
<laughs> this is uh, not I, how we do things. I know it's New yeah, Jersey, so it's like kind of far, but <laughs> but like by the way, like just don't do that. It's really bad. No. Giant magical yeah. anomaly. Oh, that's fine. Well, he is a bit of a, a, a snob. We forget, you know, he's kind of shallow. So maybe he was like, yes. oh, New Jersey. Whatever. <laughs> Who cares yeah. about New Jersey? Yeah. <laughs> if she, Literally. If she expands this thing into New York, then I'm going to worry about it. But right, uh, she, Then we've got Jersey. problems if she comes to New York. <laughs> He comes to New York, there's a real problem there. But New Jersey, nah. Yeah. I agree. There is there's an issue in the MCU if we don't it, it, get an answer to where was Doctor Strange when this was all going on. Yeah, that's uh, like his whole turf. Yeah, yeah. He's I th- probably meditating. I think that we'll get that. Or he's, like I said, he's off dealing with something that's bigger than one town being held hostage, which sounds terrible, but he has been dealing with end of world end of entire universe thing oh pasha learn to multitask <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's what wanda was doing at the end <laughs> right that's true all right well thank you for talking marvel talking marvel talking marvel wiki wiki poo choo choo woo wait choo poo 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 it's time for katie's gaming update poo do choo poo 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 pow so, do you guys happen to know the uh, classic little game called Pokemon Snap? Heard of it. Mm, no. Basically, in 1999 on the Nintendo 64, you got to just drive around and take pictures of Pokemon, and that was the whole game. Okay. And now, okay. as of yesterday, we get to do it again on the new consoles. Ooh. New Pokemon Snap. Is it nice. really new, or is it just... I mean, you're... you're Still driving around taking pictures of Pokemon for research. It's really cute. I like it a lot. For research. <laughs> for research. <laughs> no, you just want sick pictures of Pokemon. Like, I get it. We had a request last night in the Kind of Nerdy Night Inn, which is our, our live in the Kind of Nerdy Network on Fridays, and you're all invited. We've got some kids that that join us on a regular basis, and both of them are gamers. One yeah. of them is like super into Zelda right now. Pokemon Snap got brought up. and. Yeah. I actually, I'm, if I have the time, I'm going to go back and isolate these the clips because it they were so cute and funny, like doing this kind of nerdy gaming kids update that I, I was love like, it. I kind of want to have this thing. And, and so they were asking, where can we talk about gaming stuff? And I was like, well, maybe we have a separate segment where it's like gaming with Katie and the kids. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I'm totally down for that. I love it. I love Zelda. Love Pokemon. Breath of the Wild is still an absolutely amazing game. I can't believe you guys haven't played it or have no interest in it. Two, which is what no. I currently have. Okay. You can't play anything on the PS2 anymore. You can still play. You can still play the Buzz trivia game and James Bond something because and classic Hitman and yeah. Need for Speed Underground. <laughs> but Breath of the Wild, a sequel to that, so it's like this big open world Zelda game. It's fantastic. One of my favorite games of all time. Um, a sequel to that is coming out soon. They released a trailer like two years ago and they're like, well, oh, coming soon. So that'll take years. But I'm the way they, it, I am willing to wait because of how much they put into these games and mm-hmm. how beautiful they are when they do come out. So I'm willing to be patient. Okay. I want a good game. That is good. Can't wait for that. Till then, I have Pokemon Snap so I can just drive around and take pictures of Pokemon for research. And I love it. And I'm excited. Nice. Well, know that we have a couple kind of nerdy kids, both little girls, Ooh. who are very excited to know that we've got a, a grown-up girl on the show who games and understands the things that they're talking about. So, oh yeah, coming even if it's like one segment that we do, like we got the kids out here and do Katie and the kind of nerdy. Let's do it. <laughs> Anything else in the gaming world, Katie? Um. No, that was kind of my big thing. That's what I'm really excited okay. about. Is your, your PS5 still balancing on the uh, okay. shoddy shelf? Okay. I need Every, to a picture, please. Everyone I've told about this is like, I can't believe it doesn't lay flat on the shelf. I'm like, I know. $500 piece of equipment and it doesn't lay flat on the shelf. <laughs> terrible blows my mind every single time but no it's still wonky but yes it still does what it's supposed to do if you if if you would like to join the kind of nerdy network so that your kids too can chat gaming with katie it's kind of nerdy network.com or they can Uh, cry with me or they Mm, can cry who wants to cry 
When your children are Nobody. crying, they might as well cry with Jana. What's got Jana weeping? <laughs> so I don't know if I talked about this movie or not. It's called Moxie. It's on Netflix. And it's got Amy Poehler in it and a bunch of other people that I can't think of who they are mm -hmm. at this point in time. But it's about this teenage girl, not Amy Poehler. She's not the teenage girl. She is the mom. What? And <laughs> her daughter, like, goes to this school where basically, like, all the boys in the school, like, say, thank you for doing that, honestly, because that was really... <laughs> that, that... <laughs> Yeah. For those of you who are listening, I just changed the layout on the stream yard. So you can see all of us as opposed to every time we moved, our head went out of the shot. 30 okay. minutes in, we just now changed it. I'm like, oh, I should change it to this. Thank or I can change that. it to this. Oh, I love or this I can one. do this. I can do this. That makes KJ the most this important. Is. You got to do the one where the big one changes to whoever's talking. That's like the oh. most distracting thing on Zoom. I hate okay. that one. Uh yeah. Oh, I don't like that out. either. So here we go. This is much better. We can all see our entire Thank shot. You. Go ahead, Jonna. Back to you. Don't pay, back to don't your pay attention to my, my messy bed. So the girls in the school are like basically being like sexually harassed by like the boys in the school and no administrator or anyone is doing anything about it. And Amy Poehler's daughter like starts this magazine where she's basically like calling everyone out for being like sexist and that the school is not doing anything and like all this other stuff and so it's yeah, like get them. yeah but they like don't know who's making the magazine like she's she's doing it and everyone's like oh this person who does this magazine is so great and they have you know blah 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 or whatever and like it just it really builds to where the school's like okay like we don't want anyone talking bad about us so we're gonna shut it down i was like oh no like what are they gonna do and it was like a real good like girl power come together like we're not standing for this shit anymore like we're not letting these boys harass us we're not letting these boys sexually assault us like we are standing up for ourselves and there were other boys like in there who were like standing up for them too and it was it was a very very good movie i'd give it a 10 out of 10 all right what, 10, what out was, 10. 10 out of 10 sniffles 10. wow oh not sniffles but like a 10 out of 10 like rating in general okay but, like, how many how many like, sniffles? Like six sniffles. It was okay. more of like a, a cry because it, because this, this shit literally happens every single day. Like girls yeah. do get sexually harassed and no one believes them. Or, you know, there's a double standard with the, oh, cause it's, there's this one scene and it like stood out. This one girl was wearing a tank top in school and she had larger front area. Okay. And front this area. other girl who had a smaller front area. You can say also, boobs on this show. Oh, we can say boobs. Are we allowed okay. to say boobs? You Are we allowed boobs. to say that? Okay. The, the, amount of, the amount of cussing that just went on in <laughs> talk and normal, I think you can say boobs. It's okay. okay. Boobs well, are like, unacceptable. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> but like this, these two girls who are wearing basically the exact same outfit, both had on tank tops. One girl got sent home to change her outfit because her boobs were bigger than the other girls. And this happens. It like, does yeah, happen. like all the time. Yeah. And so basically the whole point of the magazine was to call out the school for doing that. Well, excellent. It, it was good. fantastic. It's for on sure. Netflix. It's called Moxie. It's very good. All right. Thank you. And John, I have to ask, is it in your plans this weekend to watch so you can review the new Michael B. Jordan movie? Mm -hmm. Yes, it is. My mom was just talking about how she wanted to watch it. And so I do have to make time to do that. I might do it tonight while I'm cleaning my room. Uh, what's that? It's, it's without remorse. Without remorse. Sorry, Michael B. Jordan. He's murdering lots of people and I can't wait. Murdering ah, lots of people. Murdering lots of people. That's like but, a whole. That's like the whole premise of the. Well, not the whole premise of the movie, but like the premise of the movie is that his wife gets killed, and now he's going and getting his revenge on the people who killed his wife and his unborn child. Gotcha. Nice. It would be weird if the movie was called Without Remorse, and he was like out saving helpless kittens. No, he's murdering <laughs> people. If you watch the preview yeah. for it, like he sets like a like a whole car on fire with like people in it, like. Wow. wow okay yeah. so right. yes i will have a review for y'all next time we talk perfect nice. we will talk about that next time in 
Binges and books, 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 binges and books. It's time for binges and books. Love it. I'm 15 minutes into Shadow and Bones, but I am enjoying it. I was my goal was to have the first episode done, but then I started watching it too late because I was scrolling on my phone mindlessly, which I'm trying to stop doing so much. And then it was time for Coffee and Cats and KJ's Cats Club. So 15 minutes in, I like how they're setting up the story. I've heard for some people that it moves a little slow, like it's a good pilot, but it's not like man, I need to see what's happening next week. So I will have my, re- my review. It is. It's on Netflix. And they're um, only releasing weekly? No, but I'm only oh. I'm only 15 minutes in, so I can't okay. give you a review on it until the next time. We First 15 were- minutes are great. <laughs> well, you said it like they were releasing like one episode a week, like how Disney Plus is doing. And I was just like, whoa. Oh, no, no, no. Netflix loves to just dump everything out there. Yes. That's yeah. their thing. We, we appreciate them for yes. it. Yes. We love uh, Netflix. And then I am almost done with... Uh, his dark materials. I think I've got like maybe four episodes left of that. Did you it sounds so dirty. <laughs> it sounds so dirty. So I just dirty. and John. What is this? I, so, <laughs> Katie, I know when people were like, "You need to watch his dark materials." I'm like, "Excuse me, uh, no, I don't." I'll tell you, I am. I'm. I'm halfway through the second season, and I still don't understand why it's called his dark materials. Now we are dealing with dark matter, but it could have been called like his dark matter, but I have yet to understand why materials was the word that they went with. So, because I don't know, maybe, maybe in, you know, in Europe, in, in, in Britain where this was created, like his dark materials isn't 13 year old humor like it is here, but if you can get past what it's called, I mean, this is the one I was talking about. Like, it has James McAvoy in it, and he's got a uh, snow leopard who is his demon. Oh. Demons are basically like their spirit animal, but like they literally are roaming the earth with them. So everybody has one. So they've got cute animals, but then sometimes like they have to fight each other. So then it gets like, oh god, don't hurt the don't 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 hurt the little ferret. Please don't hurt the little ferret. Even so though Pokemon? You know, kind of, yeah. <laughs> yes, yeah, 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 yeah. And it's set kind of in a Harry Potter world and you're dealing with magic. And now you realize that it is it's coinciding with our universe. And there's a there's a way to get into our universe. So they're starting to understand the problems that they have in their universe because we don't have them. And so it's like a whole like sciencey thing mixed with magic and fantastical and a little bit Game of Thronesy because you will have some death and stuff that you're like, oh, dude, that didn't need to see that. It's great. It's really, really good. Patches will not watch it with me just because of the whole animal thing because his heart just can't handle, even though the he's such animal- a nice man. The animal is like wearing your soul outside your body, right? It's not an animal. It's part of you. <laughs> like, but uh, it's still, I mean, it is. I, just, I don't enjoy. You just have to watch it. It's a really well-developed universe to where you're like, oh, I don't really understand this. But now it's making all of the sense because they've developed these characters in this universe in a way that like, you're like, yeah. That, well, the animal's the demon, and it's like part of their soul, and so you, they need to be together. Like, even if they separate, it starts to hurt them. So are we just going to have a binge party at KJ's? Because I feel like we all need to experience this together. That's yeah, I, I would love like. that. I would watch I it like over. Yeah, do yeah. that. You yes. got it. You got it, Jonna. Come over. We're almost, Katie's almost to fully vaccinated. I'm in the safe zone. Patches is in the safe zone. You get your Katie, are you? Are you fully Next vaccinated? week, I'll be fully vaccinated. Mm-hmm. I thought you already got your second one. You have to wait two weeks after the second dose. Yeah. So your second dose needs time to, to work. Um, it's work, magic. Work its magic. And it, oh, does it work its magic? Because you feel it working its magic. And then you're like, okay, I made it through a couple of days. And now I'm, you know, 10 days away from being fully vaccinated. Woo woo. Something like that with math. We'll run out of air one day. Bye. Binged all three episodes of The Handmaid's Tale's new season that dropped. Oh, how is it? 
Drop Down Wednesday, I think it's pretty good, but I really like it. So <laughs> is it still uh, is it still in this realm? This is so terrifying because it could happen. It's a little dystopian, like a little too close to home sometimes. Yeah. But it isn't like I, I watched all three of these episodes back to back. I didn't have to watch one a day and take a break like I have for the other seasons. Okay. Partially because I waited like a year and a half for this. So I was like, Argh. but yeah, they're now dropping them weekly on Hulu. And no, it, it was really good. You got to see the characters and all that kind of stuff. At the end of the third episode in this season kind of leaves you a little speechless, but oh. it's, it's, I see where they're going. They're just not there yet. Mm -hmm. So it leaves you with a lot of questions, but you know, you're going to get answers, but it's still a really dark show. And it's still really like a little too uncomfortably dystopian where you're like, mm, yeah, that's way too close to home. I, I mean, I was like, I don't, I, I, it was described to me and I was like, that sounds terrifying. I'm never watching that. Yeah. It, it's, it's dark. I, I, I think it's really interesting and stuff. And like at the end of last season, she sent, like 80 something kids on a plane to get out of get out of this like horrible country and whatever and sent them to mm -hmm. canada and whatever so they like arrived via plane that time so the first couple episodes of this season are dealing with the fallout of that like kids are the most important part of this like super mega religious or the whole reason they have like the handmaid's tales because there's like a fertility crisis and all that kind of stuff so kids are like gold and 80 some odd of them just went missing and they know exactly where they are and they know who took them and they know all this kind of stuff. And, you know, so it's like building up to like, Oh, are we going to go to war? Are we going to do all this kind of stuff over these kids? And then on the flip side, like Canada's like, okay, how do we deal with these? Where do we find homes for these kids? Where do we, you know, do all this kind of stuff? How are the kids adjusting to suddenly getting their lives completely uprooted? And I appreciate like that. that in the dystopian world, Canada is still better than us. <laughs> Uh, yeah, always. Canada will there's always be better. There's also the, there's also the <laughs> Republic of Texas. Oh, God. Okay. Yeah. So, like, the United States is dissolved, essentially, and becomes Gilead, and, you know, because they okay. basically gotcha. took over from the inside and, you know, all this kind of stuff. So, all the other countries are, like, totally normal when this is happening. Oh, wow. Just us. Of course. Yeah, no, I don't want to watch that. I Me would, either. before we get to Jana's binges and books, I would like to point out, because you're talking Handmaid's Tale, if you're a Gilmore Girls fan, this all ties in because Alexis Bledel is on Handmaid's Tale. So that's what made me think like, oh, Gilmore Girls. Mm -hmm. uh, you should know that right now, Scott Patterson, who played Yay. Luke on Gilmore Girls, his binge right now is Gilmore Girls. He has never watched the show. So he is doing a podcast about his first time watching Gilmore Girls. <laughs> I love that idea. I will be listening. Oh my week. gosh. Jonna, so like he's got like feelings about Team Jess, Team Logan. Like he's literally watching yes. it as a brand new person. <laughs> yes. I love it. So I would add that to your podcast binge along with the kind of nerdy girls. Thank oh, you. Gosh. Binges and books, 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 binges and books. Producer Jonna. I have a book. Yay! I was hoping you did. I do. I have a book. It actually just came out yesterday. And like, I've been like waiting on it to come out. And I thought that it was coming out on the 21st. But then it, it, I went to Amazon to like buy it. And it was like the 30th. And I was like, okay, whatever. I thought the 21st, <laughs> but okay. So I had to wait an extra like nine days. <laughs> yeah. To come out. Um, so you guys remember that book I told you about Nemesis, the, it's basically like Marvel fanfic yep. that got yeah. turned into a book. Yes. Um, this is the second book in the series about the guy who is basically Captain America. If you watch Marvel yep. and he, cause I told you guys that he was being mind controlled and all this other stuff. So the girl that he used to be in love with works for the company that he is affiliated with and they send her to go find him after he like goes off the grid because you know he was being mind controlled and he murdered a bunch of people ah yeah but turns out he had another person with him that was like his best friend slash they're all in a relationship together who just so happens to have a metal arm like bucky what huh, yeah, interesting killing me. <laughs> literally like you can tell a Marvel fan wrote this fanfic. Mm, like, interesting. I mean, that That's... is so close that I'm surprised Marvel has been like, 
excuse me, we're going to need some of these profits. Well, I mean, they, I mean, it's not like they're calling them Captain America or the Winter Soldier or Falcon or anything like that. Like the guy, the General the, United States. <laughs> <laughs> but like the guy. And the Spring Sergeant. <laughs> like from the first, from the first and book. And the Sparrow. <laughs> well, like the, like in the first book, Nemesis, like the villain, he's essentially Falcon, except they call him the Raven and he's a villain. <gasps> Yeah. Oh my gosh. Cloth the Raven. And then <laughs> and this one, All American Man is like, he doesn't have like super serum in him. He's just born like really strong or whatever. Okay. And then I'm um, sorry, All American Man? Yeah, he's called All American Man. Oh so gosh, you definitely know yeah. he's Captain America. Somebody's then, gonna get a cease and desist. Yeah. But for sure. But it's like there's like enough like diff like enough of a difference to be mm. like okay mm. that's just like 50 shades like 50 shades is literally a fanfic of twilight yeah, yeah and, just like, and it was it always was it's dirty twilight this is literally dirty marvel that's all it is yeah but i feel like 50 shades was far enough off from the story changing character names yeah. make it erotic sure yeah. good enough yeah. Marvel, please do not take the joy that I have away from me, please. Maybe you shouldn't be talking about this. But it's yeah, so be quiet. Good. What if, what if you talking good. about this book series on our podcast with the 12 listeners we have is what I brings do. it down? Is it? Yeah, what, they're like, hey, wait a minute. Does one of our 12 listeners just so happen to know the head exec at Marvel? <laughs> Somebody's a narc, I <laughs> hey, bet. I like to think that sometimes Kevin Feige checks in on us. Maybe John Favreau is one of our subscribers. Kevin hey, Feige and John Favreau, it. please do not take my joy away. <laughs> please don't. If anybody, they can afford it. All right. What is the name of the book? It's called Alter Ego. Alter Ego. And it's, it's like on Amazon and all the yep. things. It's okay. on Amazon. I got it free for Kindle Unlimited. Perfect. Mm. Yep. All right. All right, guys. Well, I would like to remind everyone that a new episode of Paranormal Crossroad premiered uh, mm. on Friday. Paranormal and Road. It is getting, <laughs> if you go to paranormalxroad.com, <laughs> you, you can watch it. It's called Paranormal Crossroad. And it, it, I am happy to say that the reviews are great. There's a little spirit that we, a little kid spirit that we talk to in this that's kind of you know, winning people's hearts over. And oh. he's, he's adorable and he didn't want to leave. So I'm uh, very happy living at the, the Raskeller in the Athenaeum downtown attending all the weddings and celebrations that go on there there's uh, a so, little kid haunting the rod scaler uh they have that was one of the things they had told us ahead of time is that that people have heard kids running around we did not get a lot of kids we just got this one little kid and he was great at communicating like so great it was crazy but yeah he's, he's had practice yeah yeah I was, yeah, I, I, I was thrilled. I wanted to take him home with me, but he's happy there. And Kitsy I will was like, never come to your house ever again. I know. Kitsy was like, no, if you're going to be on the show, I have a rule. You do not get to take spirits home with you. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you don't get to adopt right. anybody. So I did. I told her the other day, I'm going to start telling people that I have a child and he lives at the Raskeller. <laughs> so... You already have a child, thanks. He's, he's the perfect kid. I can visit him when I want. He's not costing me anything. I don't have to worry about college. He's never going to grow up. He's going to stay this cute little age. Johnny, you're also very perfect, but you know, you're, you're, mm. you're in, yeah. you're in, you're, in you're alive. So like, <laughs> you're alive. <laughs> you're still living. So I don't love you as much. We only okay. want dead kids on this show. Cool. I'm whatever. You, Jonna, you watch the episode and you want to take Ben home with you too. That's all oh, I'm I saying. Was Ben? How cute! Yes. Mm. Pa Paranormal Crossroad. Paranormal <laughs> Crossroad, <laughs> which you can see at pxroad.com on demand now. Thank you guys so much. Do you have anything you want to plug? Anything's coming up that you want people to know about? Katie, mm -mm. Jonna, popcorn, popcorn. Oh, That's yeah. right. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Oh yes. We're working on what oh, the kind yeah. of what the kind of nerdy girl booth is going to be. Ryan and the kind of nerdy network ordered flags, like big flags for the kind of nerdy girls and the kind of nerdy dudes. And I think he even got a kind of nerdy network one. So Aww. we're talking about having like, like a, when is an, this? I an, un, 
It's uh, July 9th through the 11th. That's when your Red Dead Redemption guys are going to yep. be here, Katie. Yeah, which means before that, I got to do the Red Dead Redemption stream on Twitch. I yes. took those days off of work. I remember now. Perfect. Yep. So we're talking about some sort of like, I hate to say unauthorized because that makes it sound <laughs> like it's bad, but like uh, that we would do an impromptu kind of nerdy parade through PopCon with our flags and everybody in the kind of nerdy network. <laughs> <laughs> Jana, if you would show up on Friday nights, you can veto these ideas. This is I would happening. say you start hijacking other booths. With, put our flags down. Yeah. This is mine now. We now claim this booth. Yes. We claim this booth in the name of Kinda Nerdy. <laughs> Feel free to join our network. If you haven't checked it out, they just did seven guests in seven days, all from the anime world, My Hero Academia, just a ton of really, really amazing guests. Plus the, the guests. I'm going to have to like from buy my office. niece tickets. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, she loves anime and mm -hmm. she loves My Hero Academy. So, okay, well, it's a fantastic show. So she's completely right. Yes. Just so I know. thank you, Jonna, for bringing that up. Seven guests in seven days, You're along welcome. with the Ramones and David Keckner and Jim O'Hare from Parks and Rec and all the things. Go to popcon.us and get your tickets and meet the kind of nerdy girls in July. Woo, woo. We're not that great. No, We're not that great in person. Hey, speak for yourself. I am. <laughs> I am. I'm not that great in person. Way better online. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, <laughs> <laughs> if you don't want to meet us in person at PopCon, we'll post our booth just so you can avoid it. Yeah. There you go. Right. All right. Thanks for listening, guys. <laughs> <laughs>